Good morning, Soul Embodiment Tribe, Bridget Patton here with Soul Massages. And I just wanted to hop on here and talk a little bit about energy being drained when you're around other people. And this really came clear to me in some of the recent sessions that I've been doing with people and having conversations about frequency and emotions because you guys all know how much I love to talk about emotional intelligence and how emotional intelligence plays into our reality and how we can use emotional intelligence to discern between which reality we are projecting and we're um, traveling along, whatever our trajectory is. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so I realized the other day when I was doing a session that the other person that I was channeling for was actually resisting the frequency I was speaking at. Now, it didn't necessarily matter what word I was using or what language I was using, and this isn't the only time this has happened, the person got triggered. Now, there's a benefit to being triggered. I like to call it activation because there are dormant DNA strands, threads, however you guys want to envision it. This is just what I, what my understanding is the language that I'm using. I know that this is true. I just don't always have the exact language because I'm not a scientist. <laughs> uh, so anyway, your frequency and what threads make up your blueprint are moving through your aura all the time. Like whatever we came here to learn on our soul's journey expresses itself through our emotions, our emotional intelligence. What comes up and the way that our mind is able to interpret it is how we understand what we're doing here. It's how we guide ourselves through our journey and through our evolution on the planet. It's how our soul communicates with us and really brings information to us from previous lifetimes and actually from the future. And so the way that I discern between which reality or which information I'm receiving is the way that it feels in my body. If it's a denser emotion, if it's a denser feeling, I know that I'm pulling something from the past. It's ancestral. It's within our genetics. It's pulling something that has already happened before into the now so that we can have a different outcome, so we can experience something differently. When it's a higher vibration or a frequency from the future, it feels very light. It feels very, uh, it feels like a charge of energy, like you want to move forward. So when you understand the differences of those, you can understand when you're being present and when you're in a gift state. When you're in a gift state, you're neutral. You're at homeostasis. It doesn't mean you're stagnant. It doesn't mean you're complacent. You're intentional. You're conscious. It doesn't mean you're thinking. When you're thinking, you automatically are taking yourself out of the present and out of the now. So in relation to your energy being drained, it really depends on how well you're able to navigate between those dimensions. You talk about dimensions, and we talk about what dimensions are. Very simply put, when you look at emotional intelligence, it's the different frequencies of emotions. You're traveling between different trajectories, and your perspective in relation to these dimensions is what gives you the ability to be multidimensional. It's what allows you to be quantum. It allows you to travel between the dimensions when you have acceptance around each emotion. You can live in a denser state. You can connect in a denser state and you don't lose your mind. You can stay present. You can stay conscious when you're in that dimension, when you're in that emotion and that feeling, that sensation, instead of popping out and going unconscious and being afraid of what you're feeling because of something that has happened in the past. It could be something that has happened in a past lifetime that you feel that fear. And it's for good reason. We have wisdom to gain. We have information that we need to experience through our physical reality in order to choose differently when that emotion comes up the next time. 
So when we're in um, a situation with another person who isn't fully conscious yet, who's learning maybe their emotional intelligence and your open heart center is shining and illuminating the truth, it doesn't actually matter the language that you're using or what you're saying. There is going to be an opportunity for transmutation to, to occur. That's alchemy. It's taking that denser energy and it's taking that fire energy and it's breaking down the belief systems by giving biofeedback to that person in the highest light. It's envisioning and it's seeing that person in the highest possible version of themselves, regardless of the emotion that you feel coming from them. And a lot of empaths, when we start feeling those denser emotions, we start popping out of our bodies. We start getting freaked out because we have this open heart center and we're living in these creation energies. And when we start to feel these denser energies, if we haven't learned how to master those and mirror those back with boundaries, then it starts to really drain us because it's exhausting to, uh, it, at first, it's exhausting to give biofeedback and to hold that frequency that you're at when someone else is going through their activation and their trigger. It is an actual skill to be able to do that. And that's why I work with people on emotional intelligence to, to build that um, ability up so that when you're around other people, you can continue to shine the light and you're not sinking into the third dimensional energy and playing at that level and playing that biofeedback. You're not playing a program that somebody else wants to stay in. It allows you to transcend that programming of duality and, and remain the witness in wholeness. And so back to that session I was having and the differentiation between the, the session that I have with someone when I'm giving the biofeedback, when someone is feeding me a belief system that I hear, I hear the frequency, I feel the frequency in my body, so I can pinpoint the exact word that is carrying the wound. So when I hear that word, I speak that word back to them in a higher frequency. And there's two things that are going to happen. They're e either going to fight me with it, they're going to fight me on their belief system and they're going to argue with me even if I'm agreeing with them. It doesn't matter. My frequency is higher when I'm talking about it. So there's going to be an argument, if you will. And I have an opportunity right then to continue and maintain my frequency of calmness, of you know, light, of illuminescence. And they can have this conversation with me. We can have this experience and when we go through that process together, the wound dissipates. Even if they don't know that's what happened, I know that's what happened. I know that they've had an experience with a, a physical human now with that frequency, with that emotion, and it has created wholeness. Now they have a conscious experience where they've gotten biofeedback from another human that didn't blast that energy back at them. And they were able to now learn in their subconscious programming how to transcend that. And that's why we're acting a lot of this out <clears throat> in our physical relationships right now, because at this point in history, we are, we have to, we are required at this point to commune with one another, to be a community. We cannot allow ourselves to be in solitude any longer. We can't be empath saying, there's nobody else that understands me. I have to, you know, be a hermit. I have to be by myself. You don't have to be. There are people out there that will receive this energy and will receive your light with grace and ease. There are clients that I work with. There are people all the time that tell me daily that I'm the only one that they can say this to. Well, that's because I've practiced the biofeedback. I've heard all the stories I've gone through some really traumatizing and traumatic experiences with humans that have allowed me to transcend the programming because I know from my perspective and vantage point that spirit is taking me through this journey so that we can make this world a better place than it is. The, the projections and the holographic reality that, that we are seeing right now is not the reality. The reality is inside of us. The reality is our emotional intelligence and how we are interacting with our fellow human beings. 
This is why it's so important that when we're having conversations on Facebook, on social media, the way that we're projecting and the way that we're carrying our frequency and our energy and our language, that we're maintaining that vision of the new earth energy and asking ourselves the really tough questions of, you know, how am I showing up in this world? What kind of reality am I creating by the way that I'm treating other people? Even the people that disagree with me. It doesn't really matter. Contrast is inevitable. Right now, we're going to have that contrast. And even in our evolved straight state, we have contrast. But we just experience it differently. We don't experience it as trauma. Like, oh my God, the contrast feels so uncomfortable. The contrast is welcome. When you've evolved your perspective and you understand the way that energy works and your emotional intelligence, you welcome these experiences in because you understand that the next thing that you're reaching for requires you to let go of something. So you have to be able to discern between the past and the present through those uncomfortable emotions that don't become uncomfortable later. You can discern between them and you can understand how to navigate further um, away from a belief system that's no longer serving. Because we are going to have belief systems that we have to let go of. And I always tell my clients and the people that I work with that this is the truth now. The truth evolves in our understanding because we can only speak the truth in our current level of conscious awareness and our ability to translate frequencies. And higher frequencies are becoming available to us all the time right now. I mean, we're the messages that I'm getting, you know, and actually it's showing up in my physical reality and some of the mastermind groups I'm in. People are drawing structures that we've never seen before in sacred geometry. People are speaking frequencies that I've never heard or I've never felt in my body. Things that I've only felt from our galactic star family. And when I'm connecting with our, um, the starseed families that are, you know, communicating with us all the time and within frequencies, they're, they're the future evolution of where humans are going, where our potential is headed. And so it's really important that we allow ourselves to receive the biofeedback as it's coming in. And we ask ourselves those difficult questions of what belief system am I being shown that needs to be let go of through this relationship? Because the relationships are what are really going to reveal to us what belief systems are no longer serving because we're meant to be serving in community at our highest light. So if you are serving, but you can feel that something's missing Something has to be let go of so you can be shown what your role is. The roles and the scripts are floating around in the ethers right now for all of us to grab onto and to start performing here. If this is a grand performance here on earth and we all signed up for a role and that role is fluctuating all the time, what is it that you want to be? What is it that you want to show up as? And what fears are you allowing to prevent you from showing up as that person? What are you telling yourself? What story are you telling yourself that's preventing you from showing up at that highest version of yourself? Who are you surrounding yourself with that can't see what you can see? Who are you sharing your life with that can see what you can see? And what are you doing to take those steps to reach out to them so that you can build a relationship? We don't have to keep ourselves suppressed any longer. We don't have to hide anymore in this lifetime. And when you give yourself the grace to attract in those relationships and you believe that you're worthy and you believe that they're there and it's possible, then they have to appear. You are the I am. You are a physical expression of the divine. You have all the power and ability to project and attract all of the things that your heart is desiring. And you just have to stop being afraid of what's through that portal, what's through that wound, what's through that uncomfortable emotion. Because 100% of the time, 10 times out of 10, when you go into that space consciously 
and you allow for the divine to communicate with you through that experience, the outcome is going to be different than what we've ever experienced here on earth before. And that's what my goal is. I want to create different experiences through my emotions because what happens is magic, miracles. This is the code on ring of miracles. It stands alone when you're looking at the gene keys. If you have questions about the gene keys or anything like that, you can pop your comments below and I can answer those separately. But that's pretty much the message that was coming in this morning. I really touched on a lot of different threads, which means you guys are all ready for this. You guys were asking for it if I'm channeling it. You're ready for the next steps. You're ready to take action. So if this is really resonating with you and you're looking for action steps, I'm uh, my chosen role, the one that really resonated with me, that one of my dearest friends you know, uh, gave me the label of, she says, you're the director of vibrational alignment. I can feel when frequencies are not in alignment with head, heart, and gut, not in alignment with your journey or anything like that. All you have to be in alignment with is yourself, you being consciously aware of what you're feeling so that you understand the projections that are coming out and being biofed back to you. So if you have questions or you have guidance that you need, pop the questions below. And I know I have a link or a person or something that will help you along to that next step, whatever it is, even if it's not me. At this point, I don't even care if it's with me or anyone else. I just care that people are connecting and they're connecting with the right people. And there isn't a right or a wrong person, but the next best thing for you, the next best piece for your evolution to help you see the magnificent being that you are so you can really embody the divine. That's why we are the soul embodiment tribe. We are embodying our soul in the physical. And that means working together with our ego, not rejecting our ego, not being afraid of our ego, not being resistant to our ego, treating that ego like a small child. How do you treat the children? Why are the children being mirrored back to us in such a terrible way right now? When I say terrible way, it's all of the crimes against humanity and against children that are going on right now that we're being shown. It's because this is how our inner children are, have been treated for lifetimes. And we as adults have the opportunity right now to do something different in our life, in our experiences, even the smallest shift in your trajectory. If you're thinking, there's nothing I can do. I feel helpless. I feel hopeless. Just doing this within your relationships is a first step and you will start attracting those collaborators. You will start drawing those people in who have the same vision you are. If you're not in alignment with your vision, if you don't believe your vision and you don't trust your vision, then of course you're going to keep attracting people that you're going to need to push up against to prove to yourself that you're worthy, to have those arguments or there's those fights and be at war in defense to prove to yourself that you're worthy. You don't need to do that anymore. We can skip over that now. People have done that before us. People are doing that right now. And when it's available in consciousness, because people are doing it intentionally, it becomes a part of the Akashic records. That's emotional intelligence. All of this is the same thing spoken in different languages. It's all the same frequency being mirrored back and forth to all of us to illuminate the planet. It's how they lit the pyramids up in the Egyptian era. They used the sun to move through the mirrors to light up all kinds of containers. We're all mirrors shed shedding the light to each other. So I'm super excited about this message. I hope that this really resonates inside of you. If it's triggering you, reach out. I don't mind if someone's getting triggered. When I see someone getting triggered, my heart opens up because I know I can hold the space for them if they're willing to hold it for themselves. You know, I'm not going to do all the work for somebody. Like, that's just not going to happen. I can't. Nobody can. There's not a single coach or guide or healer out there that can do all the work for you. It doesn't matter what kind of technology there is out there or what kind of healing modality there is out there. If you're not doing the work, if you're not willing to open that up on purpose, intentionally, then it's not going to happen. It will <laughs> one way or another, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a soft landing. It's going to be very bumpy. It's going to feel like you're getting raked over the coals. It's going to feel like 
You wrapped the lead rope around your wrist when you were holding on to a wild horse and the horse took off. The horse spooked. And I'm telling you, a 1,200-pound horse racing off because they got spooked, you're not going to be able to get your arm off of that fast enough. And I've witnessed this myself, and that's why I'm using this visual uh, this visual for you guys because it's very uh, fresh in my memory no matter how long ago that happened. So we use those experiences to propel us forward in the future. We know what happens when we shut down. We can't see. We can't be guided in with, ace and, with ease and grace. <laughs> we get guided through bumping along and finding our way in the darkness. And it doesn't have to be that way any longer. There's enough light workers in this world right now that are awake and that are shedding the light. And you can believe it's possible. I'm here talking to you. I'm here communicating. You can feel in your body the truth in this. And I'm not the only one. There's plenty of them out there. I listen to them. I listen to them to, you know, harmonize and make sure that I'm on the frequency that I need to be at to, to serve. I challenge myself. I look in the mirror to see how I'm projecting. And I admit it to the people that I'm in relationships with. I admit when I'm projecting. I say, you know what? I realize I was projecting that on you. I realize this came up. It was an old wound. And I was afraid to speak my truth. I was afraid to believe that if I asked for something that you would be okay with what I'm asking for and that you would love me through what I'm asking for. So that is the message. I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you for showing up however you can in whatever way that you can. And there are resources here for you if you need assistance through this process. I love you all. Have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next video.